TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are live. Well, by the time you see this, we won't be. So just leave a like, comment, subscribe. Turn on your post notification bells, man. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK and things of that nature. <laughs> uh, don't forget, we do got Patreon. We post five days a week. Sometimes more, depending on if the show's good. We also got uh, Twitch.com. That's where we go live. That's where you've missed it, obviously. The username is on the bottom of the screen, man. This is Can't Pay, We'll Take It Away, Season 5, Episode 10. Talk to me. Copyright, copyright disclaimer, disclaimer under Section 107 7. of the Copyright Act 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational, or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. No copyright infringement intended. All rights belong to, to their, their respective, respective owners. Deposits with a government I don't know what happened there. Go back. There we go. Since 2007, UK landlords have been obliged to register their tenants' deposits with a government backed tenancy deposit scheme. This That's smart. That's smart. Because I know here, they leave it up to you, leave it up to you the private landlord. And I don't, I don't know how smart that is. So means that landlords can't keep the money in their personal accounts. However, the number of disputes about returning deposits to tenants is on the rise, with nearly 30,000 cases reported in the last year alone. Oh my god. Brother. Hey, I, this this website killing my vibe right now. Go back. Over 17, over 170,000 cases of tenant landlord disputes have been recorded by just one tenancy deposit scheme in the past 10 years. Crazy story. My first apartment, I ain't know no better. I had a feeling, but I ain't want to, I ain't, I ain't, you know what I'm saying? They kept my deposit because they had to replace the water heater. The water heater has nothing to do with me. It was 10, 15 years old and needed to be replaced, and I was the one that brought it to their attention. So they said... Uh, they had to replace it and use my deposit. I was like, I know that's not right. But I ain't want to waste no time. I ain't care. See you later. I'm thinking back about it. I should have got my money. Plus some. Um, High Court Enforcement Agents Gary Ball and Matt Highway are in Stoke-on-Trent, Staffordshire. What you got next for us, mate? Off to see a Mohammed Safa who owes... Yeah. £2,874.41. The debt of nearly £3,000 is owed by landlord Mohammed Safia to two of his former tenants. Aha, uh -huh, got you. Oh yeah, this is the type of case that I have no remorse for. No remorse for this landlord. He stood at the doorstep saying something along the lines of, I'm really sorry, Matt, Gary, here's the money. Would you like a cup of tea? Yeah, right, buddy. That ever happened? <laughs> the tenants claimed Mr. Sophia didn't return their deposits at the end of their leases. They took Mr. Sophia to court and won the case. Now he must pay in full today. Hello there, how are you? I'm looking for uh, Mohammed Safa. He's out of the country. Hey, yeah. where, where is he at the moment? Out of the country. Uh, Egypt. He's in Egypt? Yeah. Okay. So explain who I am, My name's Matthew Hyde. I'm a High Court yeah. Enforcement Agent. I'm here with a High Court writ. So can you get him on the telephone for me? Uh, I really can't because my phone's not working. Do you want to give me a number and I'll give him a call then? Uh, yeah. Can you 
can ask what this is we going? I'd, I'd need uh, Mohammed's permission to discuss that with you, because obviously you're not named on the writ. Matt calls Mr. Sophia. Hello? Hey, Mr. Safa. Yes, it is. Yes. Hello, sir. My name's Matthew Highway. I'm a High Court Enforcement Agent. Uh, I'm at your property at the moment. There's an outstanding balance of £2,874.41. To be honest with you, I appreciate the follow. Right. Can I give you my brother's number? You'd like him to deal with it on your behalf, would you? Yeah, my brother will talk to you about it. Thank you, thank you. Did you catch that, madam? I've just texted him. He says he's mm. coming out. Okay, lovely. Do you know how long it'll be? Minutes later, Mr. Sophia's brother, Mr. Shabir, turns up. Hello, sir. How are you? You my mommy's brother? Yeah. Great stuff, OK. You've got the wrong house. My mommy's feet doesn't live here. Well, fortunately, we've sent a notice of enforcement here. OK, I mean, the situation is the writ commands us to attend the property today to yeah. either collect payments yeah, or to look at, or yeah, to look yeah. at seizing goods. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, if, if there are items in the property that yeah. don't belong to my mind, then unfortunately, yeah. the onus is on those people to prove that to us. Yeah. Otherwise, we'll be looking at seizing assets today. Well, you, you, you need to prove to me that my mommy's feet lives here. No, I don't need to prove that. So, no. You do? No, listen, I don't. Listen, no. lads, be honest okay. with you. Yeah. You need to listen, prove it. That's not how it works, buddy. Just because you walk in the situation and you got a little pea coat on, doesn't mean you get to be boss and call shots. Now, let's 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 put it in reverse. Park it and get out and start over. You know what I'm saying? Listen, no, 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 listen to me. Listen to me. You can't do shit here. Let's face it. Nothing with Muhammad Sophia. Right. You see what happens is Muhammad Sophia doesn't live in the country. Right. Yeah, he lives in Egypt. Despite Mr. Shabir's anybody. It's talking crazy like this. Just take that stuff. Listen, well, Claims that his brother lives abroad. The agents have a high court writ to enforce and the right to stay and investigate further. You right. wait outside. No, we won't be leaving. What do you mean you won't be leaving? But let's drop the aggro right. and the big man shit. There's no yeah. aggro. No, no, that is. Don't no try and intimidate I'm, I'm talking to you in a very That's gentle, me. calm fashion. Do you want to give him a call? I'll make a call. I'll make a payment Egypt, over mate. the phone. He's, He's not in Egypt. I've just spoken to him. Yeah, sorry. We just spoke to him. He's in England. Yeah, what would he say? He's on the way to the airport and that you'll sort it out for him. No, no, no. I'm, I'm going to pay somebody else. He's dead. Right. No, no. Just want to give him a call and tell him that's not the case. No, mate. It's got nothing to do with me. No, we can sort this out, it's can't we? It's got nothing to do with me. We'll carry on then. Sir. All right. You know, our backgrounds mean that we can suss out whether we're being lied to or not. Uh, there's little bits of you know, body language that occurs, um, things that give it away for the debtor. Um, and, you know, we can pick up on that pretty quickly. With Mr. Shabir refusing to cooperate, the agents look for proof that his brother does live at the property. And upstairs, they make an important discovery. This is the stuff that he didn't want you to read through. There's a stash of letters addressed to the debtor, Mohammed Safir, in one of the bedrooms. I think we might have found Mohammed, right? This is Mohammed's room then, yeah? But their actions haven't gone unnoticed. Oh, roll around in the property, can you? We can't yeah. see it. What do you mean, man? You can't. Let's not get aggro, sir, because I'll get, I'll get the police. Get the police here, get the police here. Right, I'll get well, the police go, get him, go get him, go get him. Take this upstairs. With tensions rising, Gary phones for police assistance. Hello there, my name's Gary Ball. I'm a High Court enforcement agent. I'm at a property at the minute executing a High Court writ. However, uh, one of the gentlemen uh, here is obstructing us and becoming very aggressive. I wonder if you could have police assistance, please. But then, two other men arrive at the prop. Oh man, they about to jump, y'all. It's about to get, it's about to get wicked. Yeah. But he. These idiots won't walk by. Wow, something. They're after Mohammed Safiya. Stop. Yeah. He doesn't even live here. Yeah. Can't see him going to take shit. I'll be fake if he doesn't live here. He related to the to oh, the yeah, defender. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. People at the address would have to prove those items belong to them. It's not for me to prove otherwise. The agents stand their ground, but Mr. Shabir won't back down. Yeah, you've got all the fucking house. You walk in for reading the mail, man. Yeah. We're allowed to, sir. No, you're yeah. not. We're allowed to. Don't shit with me, man. All right, we'll see when we're the police. Can so you mean, you piss me off when you talk, man. You're like a yeah. little fucking budgie that doesn't oh, stop, man. Right. Can we not just get this result? <laughs> I swear, no. I'll take your clothes off and chuck you out on the street. You I'll take my clothes off? I'll take your clothes off and chuck you out on the street. Why would you? I doubt it. I don't. I, I feel like he got a little man complex, and he's talking bigger than he can deliver right now. Do that. Just embarrass you. I don't think that you you would ever be able to embarrass me, chap. Yeah. Ever. People, I think. Exactly. So. That's the type of energy that I would have gave back. Like, you excuse me. The first thing that come into the head. 
Um, they don't think about what they're saying. Um, and actually, if it was rerun back to them afterwards, they'd think, well, that was just ridiculous. Um, and they, they sort of do make you chuckle inside at the time. Um, but, you know, they, something like that is just, uh, just crazy, just ridiculous. With the situation becoming more unpredictable, Matt and Gary decide to wait for the police to arrive before continuing the enforcement. But then, two more men appear. <laughs> they done went from one deep to sit five deep. And immediately try to intimidate Matt. Well, I'll spend the night in the cell, mate, and fucking fake it. Fuck. <laughs> Straight up to you. I'm not worried, buddy. I'm not you don't, you don't, you, you, you don't worry me in the slightest, my man. We, we them kind of people, mate. Do not yeah. give a fuck. Yeah, Even though you can't remember your face, mate. Right. Man, you man. don't worry me in the slightest, but the money it doesn't mean fuck all, mate. Right. Like, we pay you. We don't pay you. It's our choice. And you then you'll be out of you before you know it. Gary and Matt are now in a threatening situation. They must act quickly to get this case resolved unharmed. Where are the police at? See, that's what I be talking about, man. They ain't really never there when you need them, huh? Well, not when I need them, because it's, it's a rarity that we don't... Have I ever called nine? I don't even think I ever put them numbers together like that. You know what I'm saying? But when they need them... In Stoke-on-Trent, Staffordshire... I, 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 we don't need a recap. The comments dictated the... Gary called the police. And half an hour later... They're now on the scene. Hello, officer, you alright? Oh, all we're all we here, just to make sure everything's fine. Yeah, That's yeah. the only reason we're here. We're not, we're not taking yeah, anybody's side. We're not taking right. anybody's yeah. side. With the police on hand to prevent a breach of the peace, Matt continues to try and enforce the writ. There are several cars on the drive. Potential assets he can seize to offset the debt. You got proof of ownership for me, bud, for the, the vehicles. Akil, just go get the logbooks first. They're not proof of ownership, they're logbooks. No. You can take any vehicle from me. With no proof being offered that the cars don't belong to the debtor, Matt checks to see if they're free of finance and able to be seized. <laughs> they rolled up six deep, man. I guess power is in numbers in some instances, but you know what I'm saying? I'm pretty sure if you even strike one of these and one of these people, these debt collectors, it may actually take you to court. I'm pretty sure like it's almost like hitting a mailman or something. This isn't a, 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 a person of the court or whatever. Like, no. Nah. That's the one? Uh, funds free. Give me an approximate valuation, man. Just uh, one second. Yeah, not 400, but. Black Volkswagen Polo. Yeah, that's the one. Again, it's uh, clear of finance, approximately one and a half thousand. Yeah. All right, lovely. Right. Still over yeah. Both cars are only worth nineteen hundred pounds. Each, or? not enough to cover the two thousand nine hundred pound debt. Right, mate. Inventory inside, yeah. So Matt and Gary go back into the house to look for any other valuable assets they could seize. A Samsung TV. Oh, nice. Okay. Probably 50 inch. But then, more men start to arrive, and Mr. Shabir tries again to get the agents to leave. I'm going to have to ask you to leave, honestly. No. no. You've got to get out, mate. Honestly, that'll be no. Now, sir. Yeah. They've got a call. I know, but look what they're saying now. They've been ridiculous. You're going to have to let, tell them to go, honestly. Now it's going to be a big problem. You, 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 we will escort you off the property. You can try, sir. You can try. You can try. I've had enough of this now. You can't take well, the cause. You know that, don't you? Well, I'm telling you, I'm going to organise recovery. You take the cause. Okay. Or officers, listen, I don't think we need you anymore. Give me five minutes, yeah? And I'll get the you boys down here. Then make sure they can flash. No, no, defend it, yeah? Listen, you should do your job, yeah? Get off the property. Okay. People believe that um, by uh, organizing. Uh, uh, it's getting real spicy. It's about 12 people here. None of them want a crumb. All it is is verbalization out here. Is In a large group, um, they're going to somehow put us off the enforcement process. Um, they're going to frighten us and we'll go away. And, you know, the, the fact of the matter is it doesn't. Uh, no, we're going to carry on do our job. 
regardless of how many people are there. There are now over 10 men outside the house. Now, listen to me now. You're causing problems in, so I'm asking you all to leave because I think... We aren't leaving. Okay. We aren't leaving. With the situation threatening to get Back out up. of hand, a sergeant and three more police officers attend the scene. Hiya, mate. You're right. There we are. Just a bit concerned about the way things... They're getting to dispersing now, huh? We're, we're going on, to be honest with you, the way people were, were reacting. Numbers that were turning up. Yeah. We'll be gone in five minutes. All this can be stopped now, can't it? Yeah. But then suddenly, yeah. with the extra police presence, the family asked to speak to the agents inside the house. Now that they've realized that no one cares about who, who, who you brought here, let's talk. <laughs> and Gary and Matt are in for a surprise. What's the surprise? Yeah, I can take cash, yeah. One of the men decides to pay the agents the two thousand nine hundred pounds. Thousand there. He did say cash is not the issue. I can give it to you right now, or I can, won't. It cash. wasn't capping. Thanks, ladies. It's all right. All right, take care. It's my ship. Right, we're all, we're all done. Thank, thank you for your help. Appreciate it. Okay, thank you. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers, guys. Thank you. Thank you. After nearly three hours at the house, the agent's perseverance has paid off. Collected the money on behalf of. Uh, now it is twelve people out there. I hope police is still. I hope they've moved away from the scene to count this money. The client. And uh, we got payment in full. There it is, ready to uh, ready to be banked. Fantastic, mate. Right, I felt a bit scared for you, mate. You know, I only wanted to take you outside and get you naked. Let's get out of here <laughs> quickly. <laughs> Research. All that verbalization to end up paying is insane. Could have did that from the jump. That intimidation stuff don't work. Not on employees of the court. <laughs> Doesn't work. It's revealed that disputes between tenants and landlords over rent arrears has seen a 90% year-on-year increase. Nearly 50% of landlords attempting to remove a tenant from their property reported that the primary reason was rent arrears. Last year, over one third of private landlords reported that tenants had missed. Yeah, uh, it's, tar, it's hard out here. New Malden, Southwest London. I've worked this area before. Nice area again. Look, gated. It's, it's not bad at all. Gated properties. Steve. High Court Enforcement Agent Steve Pinner and Max Carraher are on their way to recover a debt of nearly £9,000. I'm going to call it right now. Will it place your bets? Is this going to go smoothly or not? Or is it going to be like a, a heartfelt case? You know what I'm saying? Place your bets, place your bets, place your bets. We're off to see Mr. Shung Chul Choi and Mrs. Jong Wa Hong. According to the claimant, the debtors... Heartfelt, we going heartfelt. Sublet. I frame, I, how frequently do I stream? Probably... Most, uh, lately, like once uh, every day. Sometimes twice. You know what I'm saying? Not on the weekends. Well, yeah, Saturday, maybe Sunday, every day, really. Previous property they were At least four to five times a week. ...from him without his permission and without paying him rent. We're looking to collect £8,838.08. Yeah. Matt TB, appreciate the, the follow. The escalated the case to the High Court, and now Mr Choi and Mrs Hong must pay in full today. Hello, hiya, here to see um, Mrs. Hong. Yes. And is that you? And Mr. Choi? Yeah. Hiya, I'm a High Court Enforcement agent. So here. Hello, sir. Are you Mr. Choi? Yeah. Hello, Mr. Choi. My yeah. name's Max Carragher, my colleague Steve Pinner. Um, we're High Court Enforcement agents. We're here to speak to you about a High Court writ we have for you. Step in. Oh, is this a sublet? No, no, it's not. They sent to the letter yeah. to the court, so we make this some um, date. So Have you got a date? Yeah. yeah. Can, if you show us. 
Mr Choi shows Steve a letter his solicitor has written to the court appealing the case. It's not enough. It's not enough. It's not going to work out. But this won't stop Max and Steve. Yeah, just so because just a waste of time. has written a letter to the court, it wouldn't mean that the writ is not live. The problem is... So what, what do you want, Keith? What do we want? £8,838.08. Can you make this payment? No. Obviously. Can I just explain this to you? If we have to stay here longer, we then have to go round, make lists of everything that's here, and then the price gets more. So how can I do? How can you need to talk to someone. If they can help us and pay it now, and then you can argue it when you go back to court. Solicitors can slow things down because they're arguing a point on behalf of their client. Sometimes they say, oh, there's an application to stop it. But it is only an application. It's not a definite stop. So until such time there is a definite stop, we have to continue. The writ we hold commands us to do the job. Despite having the situation clearly explained to him, Mr Choi gets back on the phone to his solicitor. 100%. I want to talk to my solicitor as well. I'm going to begin making an inventory. With no offer of payment, Max starts looking for items they could seize to offset the debt. Wow. 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 No lie, I did not expect the house to be this, like, openly spaced like this. Big property. Yeah, it's huge. It's huge property. But upstairs, he's in for a surprise. Hello. You don't have a... I'm speaking English, sorry. What language do you speak, madam? Greek. Greek? Greece. This is your room? Yes. Are you a tenant here, miss? Yes. Ah, right. With the discovery of a tenant, Max is suspicious that the debtors are subletting this house just as they did at their previous address. So they ain't but Max and Steve aren't here to flush out a scam. They're here to try and recover the nearly £9,000 Mr. Choi owes to his previous landlord. And he's still making no offer to pay. Steve, um, we're not getting what we want. Yeah. Um, we'll have to take action. We're now going to begin to prepare goods for removal, if that's all right with you. Yeah. Max heads outside to clamp the car on the driveway. I've seized the vehicle. Yeah. Um, we'll run I'll an HPR that, on it. I'll put that on. Yes, please. Uh, fi the van versus the van, probably about six hundred dollars. Don't, don't forget to mention. Hey, we we definitely lost the bet. <laughs> this is not a heartfelt case. The only people I got are like the tenants that live here. No, no, this is not even. We're not even worried about tenancy in this house. They're trying to get money from the last house. No, so no, it's not a heartfelt case. 56 plate Voyager. Right. But the value of the car won't fully cover the debt. So Max continues to look around the house and finds IT equipment mm. in a downstairs office. Is that the business we center? Payment. We've been messed around. No, no, no. Okay. So we've been messed around. You're not going to pay this. So the only way. Don't touch me. Yes, it's all going. Yeah, it's all going. Yep. Right, take your hands off of me, okay? Take your hands off of me. This will be removed. You're messing me around. You're not going to pay it. Yes? You cannot. Your solicitor is wrong. I am going to remove this. Please don't put your hands on me again. Mr. Choi is now physically obstructing Max. Sir, sir, right. We're gonna get another 999 car. Sir, so, right, listen, that's mine. That's mine. Right, that's listen, mine. take your hands off yeah. of me. I won't ask again. With tension rising, Max has to make Mr. Choi understand that the agents have every right to remove goods from the house. Please let me carry on with my job. Otherwise, I assure you, you will be arrested for obstructing a high court enforcement agent. When we're trying to make somebody see sense, I think it's almost like the bait's on the hook and the fish is there lurking and when it's a particularly large sum of money they're almost weighing up is it worth the enforcement agents removing all our assets 
or do we need to pay it and put a line in the sand? But despite Steve and Max removing his possessions, Mr. Choi still refuses to pay. He phones his solicitor again. According to the law, you should give at least a seven days notice. Sir, with the greatest respect, our office sends the letters out and we're not allowed to go out until the letter date has been cleared. The letter will have been sent. No, I won't hold on. So, so I've asked you this loads of times. All you're doing is phoning your solicitors to argue with us. I've asked very nicely, and you made no effort to raise the funds. Don't, don't, don't. You need to pay now. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Okay. Can you do that? Okay. 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 Got a card? Hold it. Hold it. Yeah. I'm not going to wait because I've been here for okay. ages. Okay. I can't. Right. Don't, don't, okay. don't, don't touch me. Don't I have to. Okay. I'm not touching okay. you. Okay. Mr. Choi still refuses to cooperate. But now the stress is taking its toll on Mrs. Hong. Steve intervenes. I'm very sorry we've upset you. Uh, so but <clears throat> we are here because uh, there is a reason. Uh, we wouldn't be here for no reason. But too much stress. It is, it's a lot. That's why I have uh, grey hair. <laughs> <laughs> when somebody gets emotional, you have to talk to them. I don't have to do anything. But continue on with my job. If the, if I was in this job, you know what I'm saying, and that's why you, the you do the professional though. You the top dog at this. You do this job the best, in my opinion, because people like me, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not doing that. It's not a counseling session. You know what I'm saying? You know, on a me level personally. that they will accept and understand. Um, I'd like to think I'm a people person. But when somebody's emotional, it does have a knock-on effect on us because we can see the situation they're in and we still have to try and get through the job. It's now two hours since the agents arrive. Mr Choi is still not offering to pay. To keep the pressure on, Max continues to remove items from the house in the hope that he'll change his mind. We've been messed around back and forth, conversations with us. Man, Max is tired of this today. Max had a bad day in the morning or something? I ain't never seen Max act like this. Solicitors who are giving possibly some of the worst advice I've ever come across in my career doing this. I, don't, I really don't know why he's making it so difficult on himself. Steve. He said, nah, mate, don't go into people's house and take their stuff. They owe $10,000. Put yourself in the person's shoes that they owe the money. They came into my property, my house, and took the piss and took $10,000 and didn't pay rent. So, yes, I've hired solicitors. I've took the time and I put, I've put escalated because you stepped on me, I step on you. It's as simple as that. It don't take no offense to it. You did it to me. You took $10,000 from me. You did not pay me $10,000. I'm down bad. $10,000. I have to renovate this place and I have to get it back on the market. Probably my personal finances have now took a toll, a hit. I'm probably in a hole, what, 20, 30K because of you. So yeah, I have no remorse for this dude. What are, you, what are we even talking about right now? What do you mean don't go into people's house? Bro, he, he, he basically tried to commit robbery well, they call it fraud and scam, but like, no, no, give me my money at all cost. Don't call me talking about, hey, is there a way that we can? No, there's not. Not in this situation. Absolutely not. Need it all up front. Phones the office for a second recovery truck. We need a vehicle to remove um, items of household items and a vehicle to remove a, a car. No problem. You got to think about it. Like a lot of people be only putting themselves in these people's places. Like, how do you even take the side of this person? Are you listening to what he did? Like, it doesn't even make sense to take bro's side. Bro moved into a private landlord's house, sublet it, took them people's money, and never really paid the landlord. So now everybody in there that he sublet to and lied to is on the streets homeless and the landlord is out money these people that were that he sublet to are homeless like what what 
How do you even take the breath to start to, oh man, don't go into his house. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? This is a this is not a good person. So yeah, I'm in your crib taking your stuff on behalf of the claimant who you took the piss and all them people that you sublet to illegally and that are homeless. Yeah. It's up. I want all the smoke. <laughs> Ugh, give Some me debtors that. do believe that no way. they can outsmart the system. So, you know, and then all of a sudden, then you have to start to dig your heels in and say, at the end of the day, this is what we're sent to do. Well, let's see who's going to win here, us or you. Is that all sorted, Steve? Yeah. Uh, it's not a company. Gonna... It's a private landlord. It's a person. I in a van now to come along and a truck. Like, and it's know. not at this property. It's a different property. The previous property that they lived at, they owe the landlord money. Not this current property. So they're they're doing it again in this property. He when dude went upstairs, he seen another person that was being sublet a room. They're doing it again. So they haven't learned the lesson. At some point, you know what I'm saying? With more removal vehicles on their way, Mr. Choi is in danger of losing most of his possessions to offset the debt. He got, Finally, he the got pressure nice gets stuff. too much. Okay, I agree. Mr. Choi gives in. See what I'm talking about? Bro, they've been here 45 minutes to two hours loading up cars, and he's been trying to get his lawyer on the phone. People upstairs, you know, worry, wife crying, and he had the money the whole time. Like, come on, bro. You know what you're doing is not right anyway, so just up the bread. If you got it, give it. Why waste time? But because the agents had started to remove goods, £1,200 has been added to the debt. Mr. Choi now pays over £10,000 by bank transfer. Yeah, I'll just call to check that, then we'll give you all your receipts, etc. Give me... Can you can confirm for me that a total of ten thousand and thirty nine pounds and twenty eight pence has been received? Yeah. Excellent. Thank you very much. Uh, that writ's paid in full. I'll issue them a receipt. It's been a good result for the agents. Yeah, they're two for two today. Everybody getting full payment. I don't feel bad for neither one of these cases. Not at all. <laughs> This is your receipt. This is for you. And you have our card. They both deserve it. Yeah, yeah. First one was a slumlord who, who robbed tenants of their of their security deposit. And this dude didn't pay $10,000 worth of rent. Sublet to people. Left the, land, the private landlord in debt. Like, come on. <laughs> yeah, okay. Good luck. Okay. Good job. <laughs> if you need us, if you need us, you know where we are. I don't want to again. I don't want to be again. Take care. Bye bye, Mr. Choi. It's very satisfying when we turn a won't pay into a has paid. The reason for this is because they've put up such a battle, and at the end, we get the result we're after. Wow, it's the first time somebody said, good job. couldn't be prouder of himself he is absolutely trying to keep his composure in this passenger seat of this van or driver's seat i don't even know max and steve have got payment in full in a difficult situation but in matt and gary's next case they find a man hiding from he's in Research shows that owners of small and medium-sized companies in the UK... Now, y'all, pay attention now. We're we paying attention. Start over. Listen to the whole scenario. Research shows that owners of small and medium-sized companies in the UK are increasingly concerned about their financial future. Seven in ten have had to take out loans to prop up their businesses which has taken its toll on their personal finances. 95% of UK small business owners surveyed by all leading debt charity had no savings at all. Now we, now we know 
right? Most businesses, 50% of businesses, a lot of businesses fail. You know what I'm saying? They take out personal loans to keep it afloat. Cannot pay those personal loans back. Read the fine print. You know what I'm saying? Now, there are situations where you like, dang, that's bogus. And this could be one of them. But it ain't no loan company's fault. It ain't these people collecting fault. It ain't nobody's fault. You jumped in that water and wasn't ready High yet. Court Enforcement Agents Matt Highway and Gary Ball are back on the road. This time in Smethwick, Birmingham. Birmingham. Where's next then, mate? Uh, next, mate, we're going to see Mr. Alan James Sartori. Ooh, 25,000 quid. 25,000. Well, a small one, then. Mr. Sartori, a former nightclub owner, fought a dispute with a business partner over property, but lost his case. He then refused to pay his solicitor's fees and now owes £25,000. Took somebody to court over property, lost, so he lost that property to his business partner, cool, but refused to pay the solicitor. Yep. Can you see through? Yeah. No sign of anybody. It seems Mr. Sartori isn't in. But Matt's in for a surprise. Just when you think you've seen it all. He's crawling through the hallway on his hands and knees. Is it up? No, the man. Joking. He just crawled through the hallway on his hands and knees. So, mm. I, couldn't, so I couldn't see him. Talk about an admission of guilt. <laughs> like, brother, you're probably in your 50s crawling through the... There's nothing queerer than folk, is there? Hello? Ah. Uh. He's not calling anymore, he's actually stood up right this time. Right, he realised that I'm a grown man, I'm gonna go ahead and... <laughs> I'm just not gonna answer the door. Hello, sir. Looking for Mr Sartori? I need to speak to you, sir. My name's Mr Highway. I'm a High Court Enforcement Agent. So I'm here with the High Court writ, sir. Would you like to get the matter dealt with, sir, or not? No, no, I'm not going to be coming out there. You wouldn't, OK. Many thanks. With Mr Sartori not cooperating, Matt turns detective. People being so foolish. Mm. You gotta go find his car. Just mad, doesn't it? Hello there. Really You're sorry right. to really sorry to bother You're you. Right. Do you know your next door neighbour? Yes. And is it Mr Sartori? Is that is that the chap? Is that Alan? Is it Alan? Alan. Yes. Yeah. yes. No, there's a vehicle outside of his. Silver BMW. Is that one? A graphite. Yeah. God dang. <laughs> okay, neighbour, you must not like dude. They do look like the police, though. Granted, when they come to the door with the vest, like, still, I would have known. I don't know. I have no recollection. Dude, cause I thought that place was vacant. <laughs> yeah. Somebody leave there? Yeah. Rest. All right. Many thanks for the help, though. Okay. Right. Appreciate it. Thanks. Well, that one, mate. Gary clamps the car the neighbor identifies as Mr. Sartori's. The agents hope that their actions will prompt a response from the debtor. Wonder if I want to come and talk now. Wow. Oh, you're supposed to keep it pee with your neighbors. You're supposed to keep it like, like, come on now. We're supposed to protect each other out here. You giving me up like this? We might be mortal enemy enemies now. We've got blue lights coming this way. But then suddenly, <laughs> he called the police on him. The police arrive. Hi, mate. You're all right. Hey, how are you? Oh, the plot thickens, man. You, you're all right. Hey, but you're all right. Hey, good. So it's um, High Court Rift for um, Mr. Does he answer the door? The Sartori. No, he's talking to us through the glass. Right. Um, he's called us, so. Yeah. Obviously, we need to go. Yeah, go and have a word with him. Yeah, yeah, by all means. <laughs> Mr. Sartori lets the officers in. Yeah. This is oh, buddy, But seconds later, a family friend, Paul, <laughs> arrives. And 
Matt seizes the opportunity to try. <laughs> it was sneaky. And get inside the house. He didn't invite you. Oh, you twat. Just trapped my hand in the door. I'm gonna wish I hadn't done that. Bro. Why would you try that with him? He's clearly an ultra heavyweight. Like you had no chance. You out of your like you out of your element at this point. Bro's a heavyweight champion. To him, you are a featherweight. This is a disparity in weight and class. It's not gonna happen. Five minutes later, the police open the door to leave. Okay. Yeah, no worries. The door can, yeah, the door can stay though. But the friend, Paul, hasn't calmed down. You're not here to do that, sir. They're here to break the block, to break the Move back away from me. You fucking move, move back. back away from me. You cheeky fuck. For the fuck are you? Officers, I'm not instructing you. Let the officers do the job. Andy, Andy, get him out. Out. You're being told to get out, so get no, out. Okay, you, are you, out. Out. Right. you are coming out. You are coming out, so why should locked up to friends? Breach of the peace. Breach of the peace? Yeah. And you've got yeah, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know you defending whoever that is in there, but yeah. No rights putting your hands exactly on me. What Not doing. whatsoever. Hey, so you do put your hands Excuse on me. me. No, 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 you can't stop him, is he now? Oh, it's a bit late for can't stop him. You shouldn't be obstructing me there either. No, sir. Let's go right there. As the friend is escorted out of the house by the police, the agents finally gain entry. And Matt comes face to face with the debtor, Mr. Sartori. It's a nice house. Some nice paintings everywhere. So my, my name is Matthew Highway, I'm a High Court Enforcement Agent. Perhaps if you'd have opened the door, we could have discussed no, this properly. You're bullying your way in. You are liable for £25,070.12. pence. So we're here to collect payments, sir. I've got £25,000. No so, so we're here to seize goods to the value of, sir. You can't seize goods to someone else's house. I live here in a rented room. Smashing, OK. Nothing. So who owns the property in the house? George, there, and he owns that car. George, this gentleman says that... The items of the property belong to yourself, is that correct? That's correct. Okay. You're going to need, there's a High Court writ been issued. Right. For Mr. Sartori, right. and it's for this property. Okay. This is my so if there, my let me, just let me finish. My so if there are items in the property that belong to yourself, the onus is on you to prove that to me, unfortunately, by way of receipts or invoices. For everything in this house? Yes. Yeah. Well, I, I can't do this. That's crazy. I, it's a little more like doable now because like, you get like emails or receipts emailed to you or, or you know you have records on your phone and in your emails of everything but like i'm pretty sure they had no i wouldn't suspect them but like they be asking older people for receipts and like they don't got no receipts for this stuff do that today but they say the land registry is me okay. i rent a room here you this can't is my take home. stuff away unfortunately that's and that's that, there's nothing to do that it's all, everything is in my yeah. name so i'll just see proof of that and I won't seize it. While George goes Fair to enough. look for documents to prove the goods in the house belong to him, the agents give Mr. Sartori another chance to pay the debt. So can you raise any funds, sir? I've got nothing. Look at my bank. I've nothing, got nothing. Nothing at all, no. I'm carrying under our chopper. So you're going to take things out of this house? Yes. No. Yes, that's what the writ commands me to do. Then, Mr. Sartori's friend, Paul, returns to the house. This time with his daughter Stacy and her boyfriend. Alan! Alan, it's Stacy! Stacy, that's the one that's taking you to the house. Oh, yeah, Alan, it's Listen to my daughter. And the boyfriend immediately starts to intimidate Gary. What's your name? What's my name? Yeah. Gary Ball. Oh, what? Oh, what? Oh, You're coming for me. Do that officer. He's threatening me. Excuse me, buddy. Excuse me. Don't touch me. Excuse me. Okay. Right. What's this? Chap, you don't even need to be here. So if you start obstructing my duty, I'll get the officers to put you out, all right? So it's up to you. Keep quiet. Okay. Keep quiet, then. To be honest, that you know, that sort of behaviour just, just deflects off me. It's, it's tactic. It's clearly not deflecting. I feel like it's getting the best of you right now, but at the same time, for what I got going on over here on this channel and whoever else is watching, the the negativity level is pretty substantial. 
<laughs> we, we're living up to expectations this episode, you view me? ...that they believe um, will, will stop enforcement. Um, they're dead wrong, you know, it, it, it won't stop us doing what we're here to do. We've seen it, we've seen that dance a million times before. This is not Alan's house. Yeah. That's not Alan's car outside, he's a guest in this house. Is that got your name yeah. on George has found proof of ownership for the BMW parked outside. Yeah, that's George, that's all. No cap, if I was George, Alan, not even going to be, like, Alan would have to go. I know that you got to, like, you didn't mean to get yourself into this situation, but now I'm wrapped in it, like, all my stuff, all my belongings, like, I got to do this, do that, like. Need me, so what I'll do is I'll get, I'll get the clamp off. Right, thank you. All right. Gary can now release the clamp. Because in the light of day, you see how But he's followed by Stacy's boyfriend. You twat! You needed the officers to support you. You're just making things worse. I don't care, so gentlemen who record him. Problem? Oh god. You didn't have to take the clamp off, did you? Yeah, oh, what a shame. And as the agents go back inside, Paul and the boyfriend decide to try and block their way. Come on, come in. Oh, you want to make that up, mate? Yeah, you've done that. Excuse me. You're doing this. Right. We'll we'll you look at all breaking into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got to be fair at the time, mate. They're just going to cause problems if they're in here. No, sir, let's go in the house. I was wondering what the police were even there for. Like, what are y'all doing? Like, people are pushing people and everything. Like, this. The police get the men to leave. And now Matt and Gary must get this case resolved one way or another. Take it away. I'll give you a list, I'll give you a list of what's being seen. You got an inventory there. I mean, the only person I feel bad for in this situation is George. George don't got nothing to do with nothing. And that's why I said, listen, hey, it's good to be a good friend, but when your friends start disturbing your peace, you got to let them go, man. Can't nobody take your peace from you. Don't let anybody ever take your peace from you. Once your peace is... Disturbed, leave. I love when it's finished, okay, but it'll, but it'll be anything of value that's in the property. George can provide receipts. Like I said, Alan receipts for invoices. That's what I've already asked for. Yeah, it's okay. George's Smash house. It. It's George's oh. mortgage. So where's your that's enforcement right. knowledge come from? Anyway? What's the sister for you? Oh, is it? All right. Strict cut now. You want what? Strict cut now. I'm Street. Was the doorman on Ronnie Scotts for eight? You remember Ronnie Scotts? Broad Street, eight years. That's um, one of the few mines. Recognise Alan from? He owned it. He owned it. Oh, did he? Yeah. He owned one he's got to be here. I was his, I was his doorman then. Alan? He used to be a doorman at Robert Scott. Do you remember when I used to be your doorman? I do. Do you? It seems the debtor used to be Matt's boss. Matt, well. I've collapsed about five, six years ago in a big court case. And I've got no money left. Mm. Living on benefit money. Of course. Collapsed. The house was sold. I've got nothing much more of this. I did feel a bit sorry for the defendant. You know, he ran a nightclub um, in the middle of Birmingham, um, walked around in probably thousand pound suits um, and was making a lot of money. Um, so to see him then, to see him now with, you know. Uh, Marriage collapse, wife took half of everything, got no money on benefits. That's tough. That's a. Um, enforcement agency's door. Um, it was a bit of a shock. It's my cancel tax bill. Uh, One and a half hours after the agents first arrived, George shows them proof that he is the homeowner. Smash him. Convinced that there are no assets they can seize, the agents decide to throw Mr. Sartori a lifeline. 25 bands like that. Obviously, mean... he's not got 25,000 quid. That'd be the, the best option, but it's not going to happen. We can ask Alan what his uh, offer of repayment's going to be. And, and then I can give Alan 48 hours for him to come up with a reasonable offer. Obviously, I don't have to say, if you know, if they don't engage with us and we don't get this organised, we do have to come back. It does end up costing you more money and obviously aggravation of us coming back to the property, which, you know. So the, the onus is on you to get this sorted out. Mr Sartori now has two days to come up with a payment. The case is resolved for now. I'll leave it to you, OK? But if Mr. Sartori doesn't honour the arrangement, the agents will be back. It was a difficult case, frustrating case. Um, you know, we weren't able to get a great result for the claimant, but we exhausted the enforcement process. A 
recent survey has revealed that adults aged under 35 are increasingly coming under financial pressure. Almost half are concerned. I ain't gonna lie, man. It take about <laughs> until you get about 35, 37. <laughs> if you ain't go straight to college and you figured out if you was trying to do something else, that's how long it take for you to get right. Learned about their financial future. With an average disposable monthly income of just £156, young adults are increasingly turning to borrowing to cover their living expenses. <laughs> 8.30am. High Court Enforcement Agents Paul Bowhill and Max Carraher are in Guildford, Surrey. Well, what have we got today then, Max? We're off to see Mr Bernard Kerr and we're looking to collect £3,161.06. Mr Kerr, a professional cyclist, owes over £3,000 to a garage after a dispute over repairs to his van. And I did some research on this chap. I think he's a downhill mountain biker, so he might have some expensive kit. If Mr Kerr can't or won't pay, the agents have the right to seize he assets or money. vehicles belonging to him to pay off the debt. They immediately spot a van parked outside. Pivot of factory racing cycles. But before they clamp it, the agents need to see whether Mr Kerr is willing to pay. Step by step. Yeah, look, there's all this cycling thing. Just hang on there and I'll just have a look around. With no response, Paul decides to go round the back and discovers the valuable cycles they were hoping to find. All the bikes here. Yeah, nah, them bikes be expensive. I ain't gonna lie. I, I'm trying to find myself a bike. I'm looking at the nice ones and they like $1,300. I'm like, oh, on now. Chill. Why? Why is it that expensive? Oh yeah, they are expensive. The back door is open, so Paul and Max make peaceful entry. High Court Enforcement, come to the door please! Hello High Court Enforcement, we're inside the property! Hello? High Court Enforcement mate, your door was open. You Bernard? Are you Bernard? Yeah. Hi Bernard. My name's Max Carraher. I'm a High Court Enforcement agent. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> go back, go back, go back. If there was ever a person to ride down a mountain by on, on a mountain on a bike, it's definitely him. He looks like this what he do for a living. Look at him. Are you Bernard? Yeah. Hi Bernard. My name's Max. Bro screams I'm a cyclist that rides down by mo mo mountains. I swear he looked just like this job. He looked just like his profession. Max Carraher, I'm a High Court Enforcement Agent. It's my colleague, Paul Bowhill. Sorry for the awakening. Um, you left your back door open. Yeah. We're here with a High Court writ for you. Yeah. Do you know about this? Will's in his drawers? At all. It's from the got back from the country. country. I race mountain bikes across the world. With the agents at his door, Bernard faces a crisis. With his- He got a nice house. <laughs> Bikes in danger of being seized, his racing career could be at risk. Well, you know what you gotta do. Evil bikes that could be seized to pay off the debt. Oh yeah, they are expensive. But there was no sign Look, nice. of the debtor. Hello. Now the agents must get this case resolved one way or another. Mr. Kerr, may I make a suggestion? Put some clothes on. Yeah, I'll oh, wait. you over here. People can be at the top of their game and the best at what they do, but if you don't keep your focus, then you could still end up in debt, even if you have got the employment and the assets. It could happen to anybody. It can. A few minutes later, Bernard reappears. This is why I don't understand people leaving their doors open. I could never, I don't care what the, what the neighborhood is like. 
I don't care if it's 12 people that live next to me that, that are millionaires. Then my door is locked, period. Oh, I bet. We saw again. Hey, yeah. For my comfort. I know it's so about. You do know it's about. Tell us about the story. My van broke down. Good with you. And um, simple problem, steering lock jammed. Then I call Yay the next morning, that day. Like, can you go and tell it to the Mercedes garage? <laughs> Four weeks, which for a commercial vehicle is unheard of. I phoned them up and said, guys, I'm sorry. I'm not going to pay this. They're like, Absolutely fine, we'll talk about it. Obviously they did notify that they were taking it to court. But no. The writ exists and there is a request for payment there. There's an outstanding balance at this moment in time of three thousand one hundred and sixty one pounds and six pence. We obviously have buddy. to collect that today. The High Court writ seems to have come as a shock to Bernard. He gets straight on the phone to the garage. You know what's crazy? Like in America, like if you're a mechanic and somebody refuses to pay you, like you can put a mechanical lien on their car and until they pay is yours. They don't end up paying us. Hey, alright. Taken him to court. Hi there, um, my name's Bernard Kerr. There's an outstanding payment I have with you guys, and I was waiting for a phone call back that I never got. I didn't want to pay anything. I had to hire a van for four weeks. I had to pay someone to drive it to Europe. I had the stress. I was racing two World Cups, one in Scotland and one in Austria. And I'm there, like, trying to practice, trying to qualify for a man by World Cup while trying to phone you guys on the gondola up to the top of the hill. Like, it's not really acceptable. If a defendant is in a dispute with somebody else, it can make our life very difficult because they've already got this idea in their head that they're not going to pay. Now, fortunately for us, sometimes we can be presented in a situation where there are very valuable assets and plenty of them. Bernard hasn't been able to speak to the manager of the garage. Wow. I was muted. Shout out to Charlie, though, for the gift of subs. Paul has to make it clear that whatever the rights or wrongs of the situation, the writ is active and needs to be paid today. Can you get into the mindset? You've got to pay. It's £3,200 or whatever the figure is on there. But Bernard has other ideas. Yes. If I let you take that, I think well, that's going to work better for me. Then I can just get that back off you and then I can sort this with them. Is that? Not exactly. No, what we do, if we were to take assets away. We escalate the case to the sale and just they could, they, Yeah, they could be put to sale. Your bill goes to 3, 8, 9, 4, and 26. Uh, 800 pounds. Yeah. Some of Bernard's bikes cost thousands, but Max warns him that at public auction they would achieve a fraction of their worth. Believe it or not, a lot of people aren't going to know how much a specialised desk works. Well, I can buy one of those at the boot fair for a tenner. Where can I get a public auction and start buying bikes? <laughs> Faced with the prospect of losing several yeah. of his expensive bikes, Bernard has a change of heart. Are you willing to make the payment? I'll pay it, yeah. Is that right? I'm going to go up to 800. Yeah, I figured he had it. Like, you're a professional athlete. At the end of the day, you might want to try to figure out another way, but like... I'm, I'm positive you got it. Um, I need uh, to get to this tonight, don't I? <laughs> you do, yeah. I'll we'll write you a full receipt so you can take this bag over to your solicitors, etc. Bernard pays the agents in full. That's a pricey one. <laughs> can you have a bit of breakfast? But as Paul and Max leave, he's back on the phone, continuing to dispute the debt. Yeah, I've just, I've just spent over three grand. I paid it on a card right here. That doesn't discriminate. It doesn't matter whether... Talking to them is not going to help it, though. You need to talk to, like, a solicitor to get it stopped, a motion to... You know what I'm saying? You're a Do world something. champion. Whether you're, you're the greatest thing in your field. The fact is that the small details, like debt and the payment of debt, uh, they will catch up with you. You can't escape. I thought he was a really decent chap, Paul. It's rare that you meet someone like that in the course of our work. No, he was a cool dude. He was cool. Very rare. 
Yeah, hey, what happened to him is unfair for sure. Sounds like it at least. $25,000 wasn't worth pursuing? <laughs> ah, okay. The agent revisited Mr. Troy a month later. And, uh... At least he paid it. I would have been interested to find out what happened to Buddy. Um... The biker, did he get his money back or no? But whatever. Tila, leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post, I'm gone.